Welcome everybody to another edition of WW2005 as we're doing this in TW2020 as it's time for Super Brawl 2005. The first on first dual branded pay-per-view of the year, year, also the second pay-per-view of the year, but that's just how the schedule works out. Uh, regardless, before we get to that, one last chance, rest of the uh, mid-year awards, I mean end of the year awards rather. Uh, so yeah, again, if you've you know been following the series even like semi-regularly, as long as you've enjoyed it, you know, go ahead and give it a look, you know, go ahead and go through. Choose what you want, one way or the other. You know, we got Wrestler of the Year, Booker, Eddie, Johnny Aller, Monty Brown, Rob Van Dam, Sean O'Hare, Shane Helms. We got Tag Team of the Year, Alex Wright and Chavo, Mercer's Most Wanted, Jet in London, Season Morningstar, Silver City Rollers, Women's Wrestler of the Year, Slim Cartier, Gail Kim, Johnny Aller, Nikita Colt, and Trisha Sky. Uh, match of the Year, Eddie Guerrero vs. Vampiro, Booker vs. RVD, Eddie Guerrero vs. Booker, Vampiro vs. Morningstar, Sean O'Hare vs. Booker, Kenny vs. Kidman, Styles vs. Eddie, and O'Hare vs. Palumpo. We got Mo Moment of the Year, Los Guerreros and Ray Jr., celebrating with the Mexican crowd at Ari Mexico, Macy's Morningstar turning on Vampiro, Booker winning the title from Eddie, joining Allard debating as a wrestler and winning the gauntlet for the title shot, Sean O'Hare calling his shot and winning the title, Monty Brown sends Goldberg through the WWE structure at Havoc, and Macy's throwing Gabriel Flair into the ocean in front of Flair and Sting. We got face character of the year, Sling Cartier, Canyon, RVD, O'Hare, and Sing and Flair. Heel character of the year, Booker, um, Chuck Palumbo, Jeff Jarrett, Johnny Lawler, and Jonathan Toro. We got food of the year, which includes, you know, Goldberg vs. Monty Brown, Canyon vs. Kidman, O'Hare vs. Palumbo, RVD vs. Helms, and others. And then, you know, you choose your stable, favorite wrestlers, and all that fun stuff. And regardless, like, you know, you have not had to, like, watch every video, you know, but if you feel like you've watched enough to, you know, Go ahead and vote, then just follow the link in the um, description below and go from there. But I'll be back in just a moment with the actual pay-per-view. So we start things off with the usual video opening things, you know, focusing on the big matches for tonight, which includes Eddie Goro versus Canyon, Trisha Sky versus Gil Kim for the Women's World Title, Sean I versus Chuck Palumbo, and of course the main event of RVD versus Jeff Jarrett for the WWE World Championship. And that opening video gets an 83. Uh, and then we move on to our opening match, which is going to be the triple threat match for the Cruiserweight title. Of course, and this cruiser through is, you know, made by Mike Tuttle getting a couple big wins, and Edith Scupper basically, you know, uh, you know, getting a big win over his own over Seidel, and basically challenged out to let him into the triple threat match. And, you know, as they were arguing, Takamichu basically came out to agree to be against both of them. And now we have this big match as Takamichu who defends the title against Seidel and Skipper. And as you can imagine, this was just a high-flying, like, pure spots match. You know, Skipper gets some big wacky dives in, Seidel does probably a springboard a uh, big 450 onto both men. Taka gets to fly around and throw him some big deep kicks on both men and some heavy strikes. Going for the Taka, going for the Michioku driver, but uh, you know, side out sliding out of it, hitting a big suplex, uh, hitting some big high flying moves, and even going up top and hitting uh, sort of a twisting 450. But the skipper making the save and trying to get the pinfall himself. And eventually, as you know, as is the case with these matches, you know, everything begins to completely break down. Everybody just continues to go, you know, goes hard after each other. You know, he gets, you know, Taka actually hitting the uh, Mikinoju driver on on Skipper, but Seidel making the save with a big dive from the top rope. Uh, Skipper ending up on, on the out. Taka Michinoku going for the... Um, Going for the Michinoku driver again, but Seidel getting out of it, hitting a few big moves, ringing up top, hitting a uh, twisting 450. Almost getting near fall. Skipper interfering, you know, breaking it up. Skipper then getting tossed to the outside. Taka going after Seidel, but Seidel getting out of the way, hitting another big suplex, going up top, shooting star press. One, two, three. A big victory for Matt Seidel as the young up and comer wins the WCW Cruiserweight title here at Super Brawl. And this match gets a 58-9, as Seidel, it says cements, but he gets the pinfall in a little over 10 minutes. Uh, Skipper gets a 60, Seidel gets a 42, I think that's mostly just his lack of awareness, and Taka gets a 66. Uh, Taka is getting better at his gimmick, but a little behind the scenes stuff, he's a freelancer, so he's only on a short-term contract. He basically came in to win the title and then drop the title, and he's done that, so that's the end of his time in WCW, at least for now. And post-match Seidel celebrates for the title to the cheers of the crowd as, you know, he's, you know, the answer is put over. He's the first of the new generation of WC Cruiser rates here in the Nitro era of the division to win the title. And up next is our next big match on the show. 
as we have a fun little tag back here as to your and Travel Team Up to Econ and Uh, you know, Nikio made their debut a few weeks back, de debuting as Stacey Hebler's, you know, de debuting Stacey Hebler as their surprise mystery manager, and they won a few big matches, but eventually Nikio Yuri, who of course was turned on by Yang, uh, you know, way back, uh, you know, uh, beef before the last pay-per-view is now making, you know, is coming, is, is now taking up a Travo to, to make the match. And then they have this match. And unfortunately for the Bave, uh, unfortunately for Tijuri and Chavo, um, they're sort of here to be used to put over Kaz and Yang. As you know, they get their big moves in, but this is mainly a showcase for uh, the new team of NKO to get the win. Um, and it happens, I mean, it's, it's not a complete squash. Like, Ch T you know, Chavo is a former tag team champion. Tajiri has been successful himself here in the city win winning the United States title. And they get, you know, a few kicks in. Chavo gets his big, you know, big suplexes. But eventually, you know, Kaz gets a big kicks. And Yang is able to come in and hit the Yang time, uh, move from the top to get the pinball victory in a little over, uh, a little under 10 minutes as they pick up the victory, their first here on pay per view in a, you know, in a, um, a very, in a, um, very strong victory here at Super Roll. And yeah, overall, the match gets a 72. Uh, Chavo gets a 73. Chiri gets a 68. Yang gets a 42. Kaz gets a 76. And I forgot to turn Stacy again, which is not the best I could do. But actually, let me fix that for a second here. There we go. Uh, they have a, um, they have a celebrate more, so I can actually go ahead and uh, turn there. There we go. Okay. Um, I just forgot to do that. Um, but there, now it's done, and I will no longer get those annoying messages about their not be on be on the wrong side of the face heel divide. But yeah, Stacey celebrates with Kaz and Yang as you know, put over that this team will be a force in the tag team division. And honestly, it's a match that probably should have been higher up on the card, but I honestly was a little worried about how we do in ring. But hey, in a shocking bit of news, Paul London, Billy Kidman, really good wrestlers, and they just go right after each other. Like these are two guys who are very unhappy with each other. You know, London, of course, uh, former team tagging Jason Jet, uh, you know, blows up, began feuding with the Triumvirate after the sort of. The, the draft split as, you know, London came in as a, as a third babyface alongside AJ Styles and Mysterio Jr. at the top of the card. And these two guys, you know, and it's, you know, London basically challenged Kidman and the match was on. Uh, Kidman, of course, is the holder of the uh, called shot title opportunity, but, you know, that's not on the line or anything, just, you know, something to note. And, you know, this is a very high style US Pro slash mid 2000s in these style match, like lots of dives, London dying for his sins, Kidman hitting some harsh moves on the outside, like hot shots on the, uh, on the, not, not the ring apron, the guardrails, just kicking the crap out of London, London fighting back, sending Kidman, you know, uh, over the stairs, fighting, you know, uh, Kidman actually going up to the top and hitting, uh, Kidman with a big, uh, sunset flip powerbomb onto the floor, laying, taking both men out. But eventually, you know, Kidman's a little bit fat, you know, Kidman's a little bit more experienced, and of course he's willing to go dirty, he goes low, he goes right after London's knee, and as he especially goes after London's knee, after London goes for the big uh, shooting star press of his own, but Kidman rolls out of the way and then just kicks the crap out of uh, London, like, you know, Kidman, he, you know, Paul tries to make a baby face comeback, but eventually it's just a little too much as he, you know, Kidman is ready for him. And, you know, after he knocks him up, hits a big uh, reverse DDT, hits uh, another modified uh, sort of like Fisherman Buster, and with nowhere to, nowhere to go, Kidman is able to pick him up and, you know, after, you know, and is able to actually get the clean victory here, hitting him with the Kid Crusher, one, two, three, and picking up pinfall victory here at Super Brawl. So, yeah, um, I thought about doing this as a tainted win, but... You know, Kippen has to look strong as a possible world title contender. And Paul London is, like, not quite there as a pure main event guy. I mean, he's getting 85, but his character isn't quite there. But yeah, this gets an 86 because these guys are both great. Uh, 1445, Kippen gets the win. Uh, but yeah, just a straight ahead win for one of our top heels here as the match gets the crowd hotter. And Kippen and April Hunter celebrating afterwards gets a 71. And our next matchup is an interesting matchup for the United States title as Jonathan Toro defends that title against Alex Wright. Alex Wright, of course, from the team with Chavo Guerrero Jr., went over to Revolution and, you know, has been training a little stronger with Tori Wilson as, you know, they've been, you know, trying to get right to singles, you know, a uh, victory. And 
this is an interesting match. Like, it's not the best match because, like, Wright's solid, but he's, like, not a super worker. And Jonathan Toro is Jonathan Toro. But, you know, this is a very solidly worked, you know, wrestling match. As, you know, Toro uses his power and, you know, his minions at ringside to get the advantage. Wright fights back. You know, nothing too fancy. You know, just solid suplexes, slams, strikes, big lariats. Uh, Tori Wilson gets involved, but not really, as she mainly just, um, you know, is able to finally get the rough to throw out the other member of the Roving Legion, and, you know, she, she, on, on the outside, like, she basically distracts, um, Toro as she's going after right with, you know, some flirting, uh, eventually, you know, just bring him in and going after, you know, the attack, um, but, you know, beside that, she's just on the outside being a clean baby face, and eventually, you know, back in the ring, Toro goes for his roaring, you know, his, uh, oh god, I forgot what I named it, uh, the, anyway, his big, oh, right, his, like, big, what I forgot, Bullhammer, I think? No, that's something else. Anyway, he does it like he's a rolling elbow finisher, but Toro gets out of the, out of the way of it. He's able to take over and eventually hit the big double arm DBT, but that but that f- fails to get the victory. And Toro fights back and looks like he's going to get the win after you know after a um, after hitting after going for the uh, you know rolling elbow again. But Toro's ready for him. He right is ready for him. He rolls him up nice and tight and like gets a big rolling first cradle one. Two, three, and Alex Wright wins the United States title here at Super Brawl 2005. And yeah, the match gets a 74, Wright gets a 75, Toro gets a 72. Let me just see if there's anything really. Um, Toro stamina, Wright was a little fatigued and lack of heat, but you know, nothing too big. But still, a solid match here on the undercard as Wright wins the United States title. And yeah, I mean, Toro again backstage. Jeff, Tor- this eventually before um, basically. Before AJ got really hot, it was supposed to be Toro versus Style for the US title back at Starcade. Style was supposed to pick up the title, but then I figured out the AJ Eddie um match for Starcade, so there we were. And yeah, so he got he basically got an extra couple months of a reign, and now he drops the title to Wright, who can be sort of like that solid upper mid card baby face. Because at the moment, like we kind of have like more mid card upper mid card heels than we do baby faces, so this is that that means there's some decent challengers for the US title. But regardless. Wright celebrates with the title and Tori after the match with 66 as the crowd cheers. Um, you know, the victory for the former tag team champion. And then it's time for another big tag team, another big match, as in a tag team match, AJ Styles and Mr. Jr., two of the top eight faces on Revolution Team, have to take on two members of the Triumph and Storm and Awesome, former tag team champions, and, you know, two of the better wrestlers on the roster, even if they haven't been possibly, like, top members of the main event, as they've mainly been acting as Kidman's backup. But and but this is a very, very, very good match, as all these guys are very competent, very great workers. And you can sort of see what's going on here. Like Styles plays the face of peril at first against Storm and also you know, like, you know, Storm just ties him with, up with um you know submission holds. Eventually he fights out of it or way runs in. Uh then Awesome works on in the hold, but eventually Awesome like goes for a big like power move, but AJ turns it into a you know Rana or her or you know uh head scissors takedown, makes hot hot baby safe safe hot baby face takedown eight. Ray Mysterio Jr. who rolls in, hits his big moves, hits a big punch on, on awesome on the outside, fights with Storm, uh, hits a, you know, multiple arm, drags on Storm, uh, it's, you know, hits, then hits a big, you know, sort of like rolling Frankensteiner on Storm, awesome comes in, AJ comes in, big fight, big brawling, everybody, you know, fights all over, um, awesome, tosses AJ to the, boss tosses Ray to the outside, two on one beat down on. On, I mean, no, Ross tosses AJ to the outside, 2 on 1 beat down Ray Mysterio Jr., but he plays the Valiant Babyface, fighting back. Eventually, uh, like, Awesome, you know, goes for another big move, but AJ fights out of it, hits a sort of, like, you know, uh, rolls down um, Awesome's back, gets a near fall, Awesome goes after him again, but a- Awesome is then able to make the hot save, uh, hot, um, hot Babyface tag to AJ Styles, everything breaks down again, but eventually, unfortunately, um, Storm is able to tag Ray with a super kick to the back of the head, knocking him out. And then it's two on one, and eventually Mike Awesome is able to pick up AJ Styles and hit him with a huge awesome bomb to pick up the pinball victory here at Super Brawl 2005 as the Triumph sweeps both AJ, Rims Jr., and Paul London. As in a huge victory, they get the win here in a little bit over uh, 16 minutes, completely clean. I get it. Just the heels looking a little, have to look a little bit strong. They just can't like be bastards all the time by cheating. Eventually, just, you know, Awesome is a big, big guy. And AJ Styles and Rick Shudger are really talented, but sometimes size and strength wins over. 
And this gets an 87. Uh, Storm gets an 81. Austin gets an 84. AJ Styles gets an 88. Again, he's he's right there. And Ray Jr. gets an 89. And of course, because, but you know, they got to clean Weir. That doesn't mean they're not going to be heels. So, you know, Ray Jr. comes in to help his, you know, his tag team partner up. But of course, Awesome Storm come over, beat down, and beat down Ray Jr. Hitting, uh, you know, super kick into a big awesome bomb on Ray Jr. And the heels leave to the booze of the crowd. As it's, that gets a 71. Next up, of course, we got Brother Ray versus Monty Brown. You know, Brother Monty Brown wants some competition. Brother Ray called Monty Brown out, and then they've been having him, you know, some fights of, you know, fights, you know, Brother Ray making fun of Monty Brown football background, Monty Brown making fun of Philadelphia and hardcore wrestling in general. So what happens before the match is Monty Brown, uh, you know, Brother Ray comes down to the ring, and he comes down with a wheelbarrow of just various hardcore implements, and then he brings out, you know, he begins to set up the tables. And he sort of like, I didn't do this as an angle just because like this is just, you know, calling him out. And, Mo- and he basically says, you know, Monty, you want to prove yourself? Come down here and have a hardcore fight with me. Monty Brown, music hits, he comes out. He, you know, simply agrees by getting into brawl with Brother Ray and the match is on. And basically like, you know, this is the referee giving them, you know, a bit of limitations to do what they need to do. And I just realized I forgot to set this in Las Vegas. Like, this is supposed to be in Las Vegas, you can see in the background, but I forgot to set the show in Las Vegas. I'm a moron. Oh, well, crap happens. What can you do? Um, I'll know when I look at the back on these backgrounds. Anyway, um, regardless, this is just a fight. Like, this is just two guys kicking the ever-loving shit out of each other. Like, and they just brawl. Like, you know, chairs, um, cookie pans, stop sign, Singapore canes. They just go after you. They're, you know, brawling. Hardcore shots, throwing into the guardrails, big suplex, big slams. Eventually, Brother Ray actually hits a big power bomb on Imani Brown through a table, rolls him inside, goes to the pinfall, but Money Brown kicks out of two. Brother Ray surprised, so he actually brings in the table and goes for another one, but Bro- but Money Brown blocks it, you know, blocks the actual bubble bomb, and then um, you know, kicks uh, you know, mule, mule kicks Brother Ray, picks him up, and actually hits a big burning power slam to the table, but Brother Ray is able to kick out at two and a half, and then he just, you know, fight, go over the top, um, goes a big, um, you know, big attempted pounce on the outside, but Brother Ray gets out of the way, Brother Ray drills Monty Brown with a chair shot, throws Monty Brown back in, big kick to the stomach, another attempt at a big power bomb, Brother Ray blocks it, I mean, Monty Brown blocks it, turns it around, and eventually um, sets up the table. Sets up a table in the corner, sends Brother Ray, and then hits a pounce that sends Brother Ray through the table into the corner. He pulls him up again, and then hits him with another pounce. One, two, three. After a very violent, intense 11 minutes or so, Monty Brown gets the big win over Brother Ray here at Super Bowl. So yeah, again, I forgot to say this is Las Vegas. I usually double check this. I just, I got distracted, I guess. Anyway, regardless, a f- much better match than I expected. Like, I was expecting, like, you know, Monty and they're both pretty over. I, I was expecting, like, 81s or 82s with these guys. But just a freaking great match as Monty Brown defeats Brother Ray in you know, his own style of match. As Mon- Brother Ray gets an 83, Monty Brown gets an 87. And a huge victory here for Monty Brown here on, on Super Brawl. And he stands tall to a 74 as, you know, he gets mostly heel reaction, but he just, like, had a hardcore match and stood tall, so there's some tears. Um, but a big victory here for Monty Brown here at Super Bowl. And the big matches just continue to roll on as we have our tag team title match tonight here. As we have Norm vs. Bono defined against the chosen few of Mark Jindrak and Simply Johnny Devine. And again, this is a well-worked, very solid U.S. pro-style match. Like, lots, you know, pure Southern tag. As Harris and Storm know how to do it, and Nidrek and Divine are, are good enough as well. And as you can imagine, like, this is just, you know, Chosen Few cheating like bastards to get the advantage. Merchant Swatted battling it up from behind to, to try to get the victory back, but not being able to quite do it. Uh, but eventually, like, you know, may end up be fight. Uh, Storm and, um, you know, fight back, do some brawling to get things going. Uh, Nidrek and Divine, you know, do some field work to get back the advantage. You know, Harris plays facing peril first, eventually gets hot tight to Storm. Storm flies around, Jindrak uses the power to fight back, Divine does some high-flying moves, to, you know, get the heel 
to you know get his you know him and Jindrak back in control. Jindrak you know slows the match down, working on Harris. Harris eventually fights back himself. Big you know big four way brawl looks like to end things. Um, but you know actually you know Jin Divine actually gets one of the tag belts, whacks Storm with it, and goes with pinfall victory. But Storm kicks out. The fight continues, and eventually Storm is able to get him up. Eight second ride. One, two, three, your winners, and still the, the WC World Tag Team Champions, America's Most Wanted. And a big victory here, as this gets an 86. So what this all means is I know the main event's going to get like a 78 or something wacky like that, just because I know this this tends to happen with my shows. Regardless, and a good, really good match, AMW gets a pinfall victory, um, 86 overall, Divine gets a 78, Dinger gets a 75, Storm gets an 82, and Harris gets a 79. So really good match. And post-match, of course, NW celebrate as they're still the champs, gets gets a 73. But a really good match, a solid, like, big victory for NW in their first title match here at Super Bowl 15 in Las Vegas, regardless of what the top says. And then we have a sort of special um segment here, as um basically, you know, Mike Tanay gets in the ring and welcomes Bill Goldberg. Out, you know, as uh, the you know, put over, we haven't, you know, really seen Goldberg much since he got the victory at, at, uh, Showdown in the Sun. And, you know, he says basically, you know, Goldberg comes out to a big pop from the crowd. And, you know, he says, you know, for a long time, you know, for a while now, he's been stuck doing, getting involved in feuds against men who want to make their mark against the man. And that means he hasn't been focused on what he should be. And before you can, you can say anything else, Randy Savage's music hits to sort of a confused, mixed face heel pop, as you know, just not sure what's going on as, you know, they put over, you know, he's the color commentator for for Thunder, but he's retired and he's not getting back involved in the wrestling you know, in, in the ring. He's been assurances to WCU officials about that, so not sure why he's coming out. And, you know, Savage gets in the ring, Goldberg, you know, starts, you know, stares, you know, has a stare down with him. He takes Mike and says, "Don't worry, brother. This I'm not here to fight with you, but I'm here to ask you a question. That's, do you really think deep down you're really the man? Because you say you fought a lot of guys, and you think the cream has risen to the top, but and Goldberg, it's true. Oh yeah, that you've done a lot in this business." But you think you're a badass fighter. You think you've beaten the best and that you're truly the cream as rising to the top. And there's nobody that can stop you in that ring. But here, I'm here to disabuse you of that notion. And then, out of nowhere, somebody hops this, the rail, gets in the ring, and just begins attacking Goldberg from behind. Just jumps him, and begins him with stiff punches and and elbow shots. You know, as we sort of get a good look at him, the announcers put over. This is Don Fry, a former ult Ultimate Fighter who's been wrestling in Japan, has become a big star there, and it seems he's tried to make his mark here in WCW, going after Bill Goldberg. And Savage says, you know, says, that's it, that's it. Get him fry. You see, Goldberg, can you dig this? Can you dig that this man, this divinely dangerous Don Fry, he's here to kick ass and take knives, and he's here to take you out first. Oh, yeah. You know, W officials eventually come out and make the save, but Fry rolls out with Savage beside him as they head to the back. It seems like Randy Savage is now Don Fry's manager, maybe? We'll have to hear more on Nitro. So, yeah, um, again, a little bit of behind the back there as this gets an 85. So Fry, I, I, like, Fry's contract, contract was coming up, and he's shockingly over in the U.S., I guess because New Japan has some U.S. coverage. Um, so he was available, and, like, he's decently over. He has some decent skills, like, he's not terrible ter in the ring. And, like, I, and also I figured out Savage was available at, at, at the same time. And since, you know, obviously his, like, Charisma microphone, not the best. Savage is around, and there we go. So, um, unfortunately, his MMA basket got a rating of four, but you know, shit happens, what can you do? 
Um, so yeah, there we go. So, sort of like a shocking moment here as Don Fry makes his debut going after Bill Goldberg. And before you ask, yes, this is another way to avoid Bill Goldberg getting involved in the world titles picture. All right, and our next match, as we go deep in the darkness, is, of course, Raven taking it on Morningstar. Um, you know, you've seen this, you know, Raven was the mysterious man interrupting the message. He officially made his, you know, he made his debut, I guess, in ring, uh, helping, you know, uh, attacking Missy and Morningstar at, at the showdown in the sun. But then, you know, he officially made his debut, and he's been, you know, taking shots at Morningstar and Macias, and he challenged Morningstar, and the match was made. And this is not what one would call... Like, this is more, not really, like, this is just a wacky, not a wacky, but this is, like, a sort of out-there match. Like, this is just a pure, overbooked kind of mess. As Raven's, you know, Raven, like, he's not the best worker at this point. Like, this, he's more psychology than anything else, so he's not going to have a five-star class. But what he can do is tell a story for the match. And, and the story of the match is basically Morningstar and Macias have had their ability to dominate people and outthink them, but now they're facing a master manipulator of their own. So, you know, Raven basically, like, you know, does his brawling, does his shtick a little bit. You know, Morningstar fires back with his own moves. But eventually, you know, we have the Seekers of Sin, Wrathchild, and Kill Switch coming out to ringside. That brings Macias comes out, and eventually things just completely break down. At first, Macias makes the first shot, like, going after Raven, taking him and just pressing him onto the guardrail on the outside. And it looks like Morningstar is going to pick up the win when Seekers of Sin pull out the ref as he's going for the count after Morning after uh, Morningstar hits the uh, big, you know, big perfect moonsault that Daniels does. Um, that against, that Macias goes after them. But, you know, it, Macias is a monster, but it's still two-on-one and two big guys. So they actually, like, are able to take down uh, Macias and him with a sort of like double spear to take him down. And then back in the ring, Raven walloped Morningstar from behind with a chair, throws him in, hits a pile driver for a near fall. Uh, but, you know, that doesn't work. And eventually, um, you know, Macias gets back involved um, as the referee is trying to get, you know, get, you know, deal with Seekers of Sin. Macias comes in, goes for a, um, goes for a big choke slam on Raven. But Raven actually um, throws fire into Macias' eyes as he's going out for the choke slam. I don't know if that would be logistically possible, but let's just roll with it. Um, Macias rolls to the outside. Um, the ref, you know, sort of like, you know, seeing Macias rolls over, goes to check him in. Seekers doesn't come in, hit a double choke slam on the Morningstar. Raven picks him up, even flow DDT. One, two, three. Picking up pinfall victory is Raven here. In his return match here in WCW at Super Bowl. And yeah, this gets an 81. Uh, Morningstar got an 80. Raven got a 70. See the interference. Uh, goes a little over 12 minutes. Morningstar was held back by the chaotic nature of the match, but still 81, as this is more of a storyline match than anything else. And then what happens post match is Raven, um, no, you know, Macias is, um, you know, even against their many better judgment. The uh, various, you know, uh, officials and doctors try to help Macias but he throws him around. So he throws him out, but then we see Raven comes out in the ring, and he stares down Macias, basically, like, you know, looking him in the eyes, and says something, like, you know, that the that the cameras can't pick up. But then he walks away with Seekers of Sin, as more star then slides in, and sort of, like, snaps Macias out of it, and, you know, yells something at him, again, that can't be... Taken out as there's down another stare down between the two groups. So yes, lots of wackiness as these two men are seemingly not done yet. Then it's time for a women's world title match as Trisha Sky takes on Gil Kim. Of course, Gil Kim, you know, thought she deserved the next shot. Joni Lawler still wanted another rematch. And then Gil Kim got the win over Joni Lawler, surprisingly, after sort of a messy match. Um, which involved them joining all or getting suspended, but now this match is on between two of the best women in American professional wrestling at the moment, and they have a very good match here. Just a superb match as, you know, they go a little under 15 minutes, just, you know, going after each, you know, working, you know, e each other at first, you know, because they've given them a little edgy, but still baby face, so it's pretty clean, but hard shots each other, you know, big, you know, forearms, stiff kicks, big suplexes, 
Um, early on, uh, Trisha goes for the sky's the limit, but Gail comes, gets out of it, hits a few big moves of her own, uh, comes off top with a, a Hurricane Rana, then hits a big Safat kick, a couple suplexes, uh, hits a nasty sort of like, uh, release German, goes up top for the eat defeat, but Trisha gets out of the way. Trisha is then able to hit her with the chick kick, uh, hit a big bulldog, and then, you know, sort of work, uh, Gail Kim's neck. Uh, Trisha, you know, Gail Kim eventually fights back, and, you know, back and forth match, you know, not quite hitting finishers, but hitting some big moves between the two women. Uh, eventually Gail Kim hits a big, uh, sort of powerbomb, uh, goes up top, hits a, um, moonsault from the second rope for a near fall, then goes up top for the eat defeat, but Trisha Sky is able to barely get her foot on the ropes, break for a three count. Ref, you know, Gail Kim a little frustrated, argues with the ref. Sky goes for a roll up, that gets Gail Kim a little more upset. You know, she begins to, you know, you know, throw punches at Trisha. Trisha fight fights back. Eventually, uh, Gail Kim goes for a, uh, tornado DDT. Trisha Sky turns in, into a power bomb, chick kick, and then Trisha hits the sky's the limit to pick up the victory here and retain her title in her third defense of the WCW Women's World title here at Super Brawl. And, you know, a big victory for Trisha Sky over Gail Kim. As this match gets an 82, uh, Trisha gets an 86, Gail Kim gets a 78. A little worse than I thought, but, you know, face-face combination. Uh, but, you know, Trisha gets this big solid win here, and Trisha help, helps Gail Kim up, and it looks like, you know, these two women are about to, you know, have a handshake. But then, oh, Gail Kim uh, wallops, hits Trisha, picks her up, pile driver, and just begins to beat her down before, you know, referees break it up. And there you go. 84, but yeah, Gail comes now heel, and the feud looks like it must continue. But then, oops, it's time for our third match from the top, as in a natural born blow off, Sean O'Hare face Chuck Homolo, as, as they could both come down to the, re come down to the ring, the and now she's basically put over, you know, that this is going to be under relaxed rules as both men want a finish to this match and finally see who's up top. And this is just an absolute fight from the, like, there's not going to be a lot of wrestling moves being done in this match as they just begin fighting and brawling, going after each other right from the top, like, in fighting, clothesline to the outside, brawling through the guardrails, over the ring announce table, into the crowd even a, a, a bit before, you know, the referee gets them back to the outside, Palumbo attacks from behind, hits a big boot, on the, you know, in, in, in the ringside area, uh, hits a big suplex on the outside, of, you know, uh, kicks the crap out of O'Hare, sends him back in, goes for the full throttle, full throttle, O'Hare fights out of it, does his own brawling, hits the big power slam, goes for the lariat, um, but Palumbo goes low, Palumbo hits a big sort of like modified DDT, begins to, can he, can he use the beat down, uh, Palumbo goes for, throws him to the outside again, wallops him with a, wallops him with a chair as he tries to get up, uh, chokes him with a cable, uh, again, throws him back in, try, eventually, like, really goes for another, uh, full throttle, but again, O'Hare fights out of it, O'Hare hits a few, like, brawling back, uh, eventually, Palumbo sends him to the corner, O'Hare gets out of the way, big side suplex by O'Hare, tosses him over, uh, tosses him to the outside, O'Hare actually hits a big double double axe handle from the ring apron onto Palumbo, possibly, you know, probably just destroying his knees in reality. Um, they continue to fight. Uh, O'Hare goes for a full throttle on the ringside, you know, onto the, through a table, but O'Hare blocks it, hits, and he hits a big backdrop th through the uh, announce table. O'Hare then throws Palumbo in. Uh, he goes for the Widowmaker. Palumbo, you know, elbows out of it. Goes for a full throttle, gets out of it again. Power slam, lariat, widowmaker. No. Palumbo uh, fights out of it, hits a big boot, goes for a you know gets a chair shot. Goes the you know I mean go grabs a chair, goes for a chair shot. Uh, Palumbo's ready. Uh, O'Hare's ready for him. Picks him up, you know blocks it, kick to the gut. Picks him up, widowmaker onto the chair. One, two, three. Sean O'Hare. Picks up the victory here at Super Bowl. So yeah, this goes a little over 14 minutes. O'Hare gets an 81, Palumbo gets an 88, and he gets the big victory here. 84, a little disappointing, but you know, what can you do? Um, stamina 
and a little some morale issues, but you know what can you do again? But a big victory here for Sean Harris. He gets the win over Chuck Colombo. As like I said, this gets an 84, so on victory. And post match, O'Hare stands tall and walks away as a winner here, as this gets a 69. As we're now moving on to our big semi main event and main event matches of the night. And it's Canyon versus Eddie Guerrero one more time, best of the best. And as you can imagine, these guys just go after each other once again. Um, and it's a freaking, like, it's a exceptional match as they're just going after each other right from the start. Actually, Canyon, like, really goes early, like, less than a minute for a Canyon Cutter, but Eddie's ready for him. But Eddie then goes for a uh, Blue Thunder Bomb early, but Canyon gets out of it, and they just sort of, like, stand off of each other and s slow things back down. Eddie's Eddie, so he, he does his cheating. He hits the suplexes. He, like, tries to go to, you know, tries to lock in some, uh, Lucha submission holds. Canyon fights out of it, does some brawling. As you'd expect, match eventually goes to the outside. Big planche up by Canyon onto Eddie. Fight up the ramp, fight back down. Uh, Canyon, uh, actually hits a, goes for the Canyon Cutter on the outside, but Eddie pushes him off. Uh, Eddie goes for the Brain Buster on the outside, but Canyon gets out of it. Back inside, some more submission. Like reversals, Canyon actually gets it locks in a, you know, in a throw, in a throwback to his old partner. Actually, locks on a figure four on Eddie, but Eddie, you know, reverses it, fights out of it, and then Eddie himself uh, locks in a sharpshooter or scorpion death lock on Canyon. But Canyon fights out of that. Big fighting and brawling. Uh, Eddie hits the three amigos. Goes up top, hits the frog splash, goes for the frog splash, but Canyon rolls away. Canyon actually hits the first Canyon cutter of the match, but he. Eddie kicks out at a little before three. Uh, more fighting, more fighting. Uh, Ken hits a big flying forearm, sets him up for the flatliner. Eddie fights out of it, hits a low blow because he's Eddie. Um, go, Eddie hits the thunder bomb, hits the brain buster of doom, goes up top. Frog splash. No, Cannon barely gets his knees up, but he's too slow to get up and hit the cannon cutter. So Eddie actually takes back the advantage despite uh, being the one taking the knees there. Uh, hits a big power bomb for near fall. Uh, Canyon fights back, goes for the cannon cutter, and hits it, but Eddie gets his foot on the ropes, also right before three. Uh, then he goes for the flatliner, Eddie fights out of it, uh, big clothesline to the outside, they fight, they fight, they fight, ref tries to get him back in, but eventually he begins counting, and after a little over 20 minutes, they fight up the ramp, to the outs up to the top of the ramp, and th to the backstage area, as the ref counts to 10, and the bell is rung on the match. So yeah, after a little over 20 minutes, they fight to a double countout. This gets an 89, Eddie gets a 92, Cannon gets a 92. And yeah, I mean, basically, really great match, but matches are a little bit by the finish. And, you know, I sort of understood that, but then they continue to fight, um, you know, back from the outside, back, to, you know, back to the ring apron, and but Eddie actually gets the advantage, and it looks like he's going to actually... Powerbomb Canyon off the stage where these officials come out and break it up and break, you know, keep the two men apart as they continue to go after each other. So there you go. Let's move on now to our main event of the evening. This is getting 86. So first, Jared comes out to an 82. Lots of boos. Out just put over, you know, Jared is a five time world champion. Whereas of how you think he got those world champions, you know, he was part of the Horseman for a long time, but now he's here, ready to take back his title, what he thinks is still, you know, his world title for the Chosen Few. RVD comes out, 82, big pop, as then they face off, and the match is on. And these two, just, like, they do battle. Like, this is two guys who, one could say, are overachievers here in this version of the CW. Like, RVD really never got his true shot at being a top guy in this era, partly due to his own issues, and partly because just how WWE was run back then. Of course, Jeff Jarrett, I mean, Jeff Jarrett was, like, king of TNA forever, but what is king of TNA being, really? But here, in this version of reality, there are two of the top stars in a number two promotion that's very close to the WWE, much closer than any TNA, or, frankly, some current companies, are actually two. As they just... And... You know, two of the top stars in the business right now going after the other. And, you know, Jarrett is still the con consummate Southern heel. And he does that. Like, you know, brawling, fighting, taking Jarrett, taking RVD down, going after his knees, trying to limit, A, limit his ability to high fly, and going after that, you know, trying to lock in that figure four. And he goes for it early. RVD fights out of it. You know, RVD fights out of it, goes for his own moves, like sending Jarrett to the outside. But, you know, Jarrett is, you know, he's 
a nasty heel, but he can still fight on the outside because he is broke in that Memphis style. Um, so, you know, brawling to the back, you know, brawling on the right side area. They go into the crowd a bit because, I mean, this is just after in the 2000s. So there will be some crowd brawling. Um, but, you know, get, get back in the ring. Jarrett takes advantage of, you know, late, actually tries to lock in the figure four. And, and, but, you know, and locks it in, but RVD reverses it. And actually, because he's flexible, he's able to, like, take the hold for longer than most people could. Eventually, he does get to the ropes after a really long stretch where even the outros are putting over that it's nearly impossible that RVD can hold out for this long. Uh, and, you know, then from there, it's really heel work on RVD. You know, as Jarrett just, like, beats the crap, you know, really beats the crap out of him. And it looks like, you know, he is going to get the victory. He goes for the stroke, but RVD blocks it once. Twice, about a third time, Jarrett finally hits it, but RVD kicks out at just before three. You know, of course, Jarrett is upset, and he actually goes for a pal driver on RVD, but Van Dam, you know, backstrap out of it. You know, underdog babyface now, a little bit injured, fighting back, brawling, fighting, hits the, um, you know, leg lariat, you know, but is then down himself, because, of course, Jarrett's been working on it. Jarrett, you know, but he slowly gets up to the top rope, hits the frog splash, but... But is a unable to actually get over the pinfall as he has to roll off, but he's like easier to hurt to actually get the pinfall. Jared kicks out a little before three, despite like being down for a lot more than three seconds. Just Van Dam's the only like, pinball victory. Uh he RVD actually goes, picks up our uh, Jared again, goes for the backbreaker, but Jared goes low, takes advantage, hits a couple big suplexes, brawling, um, locks in the figure four again, but RVD fights out of it, uh, reverses it. So Jared has to get to the ropes. Uh, Jarrett goes low, goes for just for a small package to get the, like, sort of sneaky one for the title, but RVD fights out of it. And then, you know, Jarrett goes for the stroke, RVD blocks it, hits a, hits a Russian leg suit of his own, hits the rolling thunder, backbreaker, up top rope, five star frog splash right in the middle of the ring. One, two, three, your winner. After a little over 20, under 23 minutes, and still the WC world champion is Rob Van Dam. And this match gets a 97. Uh, RVD got a 90. Jared got an 88. So let me see here. What was the bonuses? So yeah, very hot crowd. And yeah, just a really great match. As the main event does not screw me over for once. But then, you know, Jared, you know, rolls to the outside and gets to the back as the heel. But then the Triumvir come down to the ring. And they sort of like, you know, circ like, you know, uh, you know, they come down from the ramp. And at, the, at that side of the ring, you know, Awesome and Storm are with the ring aprons. Kimmins right at, you know, sort of in a triangle formation at the top of them. And it looks like, you know, we're going to see Kimmin call his shot and win the title off RVD as he's been beaten, beaten down by, by over 20 minutes by Jeff Jarrett. When suddenly, Money Brown's music hits and he comes down to the ring to a mixed pop and he, you know, basically stands off against all three members of the chosen, of the triumvirate and then walks in the ring and drills Ravanam with a pounce as he's slowly getting up. As he's basically making the claim that it's he who will be getting the next title shot, and he doesn't want to take Kimmin to take that title off him until then. So there we go. This gets a 99. As it looks like Money Brown has called his shot, in a way, to become the next number one contender for the world championship. So this gets a 94 overall, so a really good show. And honestly... Jarrett. Um, who else did great? Uh, let's see here. Oh, yeah. Um, Eddie Guerrero. Now, what was the match that was? Oh, right, yeah. Uh, Brother Ray, you did really great. And uh, what was the other match that I... For, right, and Paul London, because you did the job here. There we go. All right. So, yeah. Honestly, a really good show. Like, a shockingly good show, all things considered. Like, I would... Like... I was really worried about that main event between RVD and Jarrett, either like some weird chemistry, even though they've had matches before, or just like the crowd burning out. But I guess I, for once, managed not to burn out the crowd for once. In regards, just a really solidly great show. Um, and then, you know, we set up sort of the next series of matches as, you know, Monty Brown, he sort of like calls his shot to get the world title shot next, and some other fun stuff. Some fun stuff. So as you can see, Taka, you know, that's the end of his time. Let's see here what we're looking at as beyond that. Let's see here. Drug test. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't really... Yeah. Um, buy rates are off, and I'll maybe work to figure those out at some point, but that's beside the point. So, um, 
first check in size wise not bad like you know we're getting there but uh what was i looking at uh top 100 let me just see here for events all time that was our sixth best event and our fourth best pay-per-view interesting and match wise that was yeah one of basically tied for seven fun stuff um if we look at our roster let's just start with people who are major stars so aj aj lost a couple points with that loss but like he'll be back eventually uh kidman kidman actually gained back a couple points because i think he did he did a job last month uh palumbo Plumbo lost a couple points, but again, he can gain those back pretty quickly. Eddie's Eddie. He's still uh, great. Uh, Jarrett. Jarrett, shocking, like, Jarrett lost a point, but that's not the end of the world. Uh, let's see here. Canyon. Canyon gained two points. Awesome is even. Bonnie Brown also even. Ray Jr. Ray Jr. is about the same, it looks like. RVD is even. I mean, I'm not sure if that's a pop cap or just like there's nobody else over enough. O'Hare didn't really gain too much, unfortunately, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, let's see here. Trisha Sky. Trisha Sky, yeah, really freaking over. Um, then if we look at our stars. Alex Wright, did he get a, a big boost? Eh, he, he got a couple of points from the U.S. champion. Uh, Don Fry comes in at an 83, as you can see. Gail Kim. Okay, so he... Oh, well, that's this is mostly her win over Jeremy Lawler, but there there we go. You know, there she is. Uh, let's see here. James Storm. Decent, like, yeah, still decently over. Uh, Jonathan Toro. Lost a couple points, as you'd expect. Kaz is Kaz. Let's see here. Kaz, okay, so yeah, being actually pushed and you know, going over, that's good. Uh, Morningstar, let's see here. Yeah, he lost a couple points doing the job to Raven, as you expect. Uh, Paul London. Eh, he, he's about the same. Let's see here. And then if we go back to well-knowns of people we care about. Uh, Brother Ray, I mean, let's see here. Raven. So yeah, he gained like already in a few points. Recognizable. Um anybody we care about here? Not really. So yeah, I think we have to go to unimportant. Let me see how that win for Matt Seidel did for him. So Seidel's was at in the twenties, and he's okay, so yeah, I mean he's still not that over, but hey, that's part of Taiwa reason why you wouldn't title but if we look at our storylines uh against the darkness is at an 81 choosing well um jared the world title feuds at a 92 cruiser stuff's at a 59 the gilt gorberg fry savage feud started at 77 uh the kaz yang taziri feuds is at a 69 the tech title feuds at an 86 the uh, um eddie canning feud at an 89 one woman's title of one including feud is at 59 uh the other one's feud at 63 the u.s title feuds at a 73 uh, the Gale, Joni, and Trisha feuds at an 83. Uh, Keenan, Ken's at a 65. Kim and London's at an 87. Revolution Rising at an 87. Oh, Columbo's at O'Hara's at an 87. Stopping Ups at an 88. And the, the TV title feuds at an 84. Uh, creative wise, top guys RVD, Goldberg, Eddie, Trisha, Sky, Ray Jr. I mean, sort of who you'd expect to be our top folks. Uh, let's see here. Next big things, like our mix of. People you'd expect to, like, you know, Angel Fox, yes. Paul London, yes. Ray LePen, it's kind of surprising. Uh, Lila Viva is kind of surprising. Hot Prospects, Angel Fox, Teddy Hart, Keenan Sharp, Lizzie Dumas, Slash Rue. Surprising, Lizzie's still injured a prospect. Talk the Talk, Canyon, Flair, Booker, RVD, Jarrett. Showstoppers, Ray, RVD, Eddie, AJ Styles, Teddy. Ring Generals, Lance Storm, Ray, Eddie, Morningstar, Chavo. Who's Hot, Mike Awesome, Canyon, Eddie, Money Man, Booker T. Again, who would you expect? And nobody in the who's not. So yeah, that's about it. So again, next up, 
will be the um you know will be the post you know the road begins to um wrestle war which is a our no not wrestle war it'll the road will begin to rising sun revolution which is our um revolution only show in japan and yeah that'll be that so you know if you enjoy this you want to give it a like comment below what you're enjoying and not enjoying and of course subscribe to my channel for tw 2020 content like this and my new japan 2004 series but that's about it for now so talk to you later and adios have a good one